So we discussed dynamic dispatch, which is calling methods dynamically. We also talked about dynamic method, which is defining methods dynamically. Let's talk about ghost methods. So here's a philosophical question. If a method is invoked and it's not found, was it really called at all? No, but seriously, let's take a look at this example. We have some class, and you have an instance of that class called bar, but no methods defined in the class. So then you say bar dot I don't exist. Well, it's kind of obvious what's going to happen. We never define the I don't exist method, so it's going to fail. And the error message you get is no method error, undefined method, I don't exist. It's kind of obvious. Well, actually, it's not so obvious. So what's happening behind the scenes is that Ruby looks for the method invoked in the class to which it belongs, and obviously doesn't find it there. Then it goes up the ancestors tree. Um, classes and modules, and it still doesn't find it. If it still doesn't find the method, then it invokes the method missing method. Now, the default method missing implementation throws the no method error, which is why you are seeing this no method error. But method missing is just a method. So because method missing method missing is just a method, you can easily override its behavior. And inside that method missing, you have access to the name of a method that was called, the arguments passed in, as well as the block if it was passed into a method. So for example, you want to write a mystery class that doesn't have any methods defined except for the method missing method, which has access to the method name that was called, as well as the arguments as an array with splat. So what this is going to do is going to say, looking for the method that was passed in with params, whatever params are. Sorry, he's on vacation. And then uh, if a block is given, to a method that you're trying to call, you could say, it's going to say ended up in method missing, um, and it's going to yield this as a parameter to the block that was passed in. Okay, so how does this actually work? So then you have the mystery class, which becomes the instance, so this M is just the instance of a mystery class, and then you could call any methods you want. So for example, you call a method called solve mystery, pass in parameter A, B, C, and 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, as well as the block with an answer, and the answer is whatever the answer is, and the, the, black, per, the block parameter is going to be something that's going to be coming from a method missing method. So what you're going to get out of this is looking for solve mystery, which is a method name, so that's this, with params A, B, C, and 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Sorry, his invocation, and the answer is ended up in method missing, which is coming from here. So basically what this method missing allows you to do is call any methods you want on the instance of a mystery class. So essentially what it lets you do is fake the methods and it's called the ghost methods pattern or concept because the methods are ghost methods. They don't really exist. And actually, Ruby's built-in classes you use this method missing all over the place. So for example, we have two cons constructs, one called struct and one called open struct. So struct is a generator of classes and each one of these of which is defined to hold a set of variables and their accessors. So the struct is really using the dynamic method pattern. 
And then you also have the open struct, which is similar to struct, but whose attributes are created dynamically when first assigned. So this is really the ghost methods pattern. Let's see how these things play out. For example, you want to create a customer class, but it's really going to be a simple class. You just need some um, attributes on the class, like name and address, and maybe you need one more method. So for example, the two string method. So really, struct just takes in the, the attributes inside of here and gives you the class. And there's an optional block that you could specify if you want, to, if you want more methods besides for just the attributes. So in this case, it's a customer class. So you could have the name, the address, as well as a two string, which is, which is defined here, and it, it becomes a regular class. You could use it like gym.name, you could assign name to it, you could print the attributes, and all you had to do was, was uh, define the struct. Now, open struct is similar, but a little more complicated, and I guess a little more rarely used because you actually have to import it as a as a fun as a feature of a language by doing require OS struct. If you remember from before, the 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 things which are not used most of the time, you actually have to import. So require OS struct, and then you could say open struct name and age, and you actually define what they are, and then you could you could actually um, call methods. So, for example, I mean, in this case, you do dot sure, three, and then dot really, yes, it is true. So you are basically assigning these values of three and yes, it is true, to these methods that don't exist, or and and does doesn't have to be strings. It could be even like like integers. So some object, not only strings, and now all of a sudden you have all of these values which are defined uh, on your some object object. So some object that name, which is from here, is the age, which is from here, and some object really, which is another attribute on some object, which just all of a sudden showed up. You didn't even have to define it. You sort of just used it, and it automatically knew what you were trying to do. In any case, um, the way you could use the ghost methods pattern in our case of a reporting system, right? So now instead of doing the reporting system which has the store and delegates methods to the store, what you could do is you could define a method missing method in the reporting system and basically it's going to say initialize the store and then um, so check that the store actually responds to the method so for example get piano description right get piano desk if it does respond to that method then you know that the store already does it, so just call, call that method in the store. And super basically says, do the regular method missing behavior uh, otherwise, right? So if it's a method that's really not found, if, you, if it's a reporting system and you create some kind of a, bar, and you call some kind of a bark method on a reporting system, you obviously don't want that, so then just do whatever the super whatever your regular method missing method does. Otherwise, if it's, if it's a method that's supported by the store class, just delegate to, that, to the store uh, for that method. And it works exactly the same. Now, so here's an interesting problem with method missing. It only works for methods which are truly missing. But let's say 
what, what you have to be careful uh, with is that let's say the method exists in the ancestor tree, then the call will not end up in the method missing method like you expect. It will actually execute the method which already exists in the in the ancestor uh, hierarchy. Now, what you could do in that case is you could actually remove a method using something called undef method, or you could extend from basic object. So I haven't talked about basic object too much, but basically, um, so far, everything has been extending from object, which has its own methods, but then object itself inherits from basic object, which really almost has no methods at all. So if you want this pattern of method missing and you actually don't want certain methods to be out there, uh, which happen to exist in object, you want to extend from base, you could extend from basic object, which has even less methods than object, which is called the blank slate approach. So for example, um, this is an example of of, of such pattern. There's a gem out there called Builder Gem. And basically what it lets you do is it lets you define XML using Ruby. So you gem install builder gem just by doing gem install builder. And then in your code you could do require builder and then you could say uh, XML, builder XML markup. You could specify that you want it to output the standard out. You want to have an indent of two spaces. And then you could say, for example, XML university. So this will create the university element. And then inside, you could have name JHU, which will create the name attribute on the university um, element. And then you could have nested inside of that you could have two more elements called XML class, Ruby on Rails, uh, some, some other class. So it will create those two XML elements. And basically, it will, it will output this, this structure, or this XML structure, which is useful. Now, the problem is class, so you basically you say it, 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 what, 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 what this really says is that any anything that shows up after this XML, which is a builder, um, treat that as a name of a XML element. The problem is class is already a a built-in method. So how could you override the behavior of a class to be possibly an XML element here when class is already a, a built-in Ruby method. So they're probably using one of these things. They're either undefining the class method or just extending from a basic object a blank slate approach pattern um, to get this behavior. Uh, one other thing to watch out with method missing is performance. So since the invocation is indirect, uh, what I mean by that is that it first has to go up a tree and say, okay, is the method in, in this class? No, go up a tree, go to kernel module, go to the basic, uh, go to the object class. Keep looking for that method. Oh, okay, it doesn't exist, so go ahead and execute the method missing. So there could be a slight performance issue. Most of the time, it probably doesn't matter that it takes a little bit longer, but it does take a little bit longer just because if you think about it, it's not actually directly executing the method. It's not directly invoking the method. It's sort of like faking the method, the method execution, the method indication, but it, it takes, takes it some time to get there before it realizes that that method is not there. Now, if performance is an issue for you, you could consider a hybrid approach, which is you dynamically define a real method from inside the method missing, right? So maybe with the first time, it actually goes into method missing, but then inside the method missing, 
besides for actually uh, doing the behavior that you would want it to do in such a case, you also define a method with that name that was called, because again, you have a method name available to you inside the method missing method as one of the parameters. So you, you do the behavior that that's requested and almost like a cache, right? You define the method right away. So this way, the next time the method is being called, instead of going to method missing, it will just it will just actually invoke the newly created method, right? So this is sort of a combination of a ghost method pattern with the dynamic math uh, dynamic method pattern, right? You 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 use the ghost method pattern sort of as a as a stop gap measure, but then inside the method missing you define a new method on your Ruby class.